Okay. Uh, uh, right right <coughs> Alright. So for educational purposes only, and uh, no explosives were handled uh, at all. Everything was simulated with a camera flash. And don't try to reproduce any of what you see in these slides at home. Okay, um, the next slide, this is uh, Creative Commons. Uh, all, all this work is uh, for free for anyone to copy, paste, whatever, uh, use it, steal it, whatever. Just give me credit for it. That's all I ask. And um, there's the cage number, and that's what I used to do in the Air Force. All right. If you want, follow me on Twitter, at BackTraceSec. And yes. This is RFID improvised educational device. Um, <laughs> this is <coughs> all this was um, in part due to a uh, German dude that I used to hang out with that I just used to talk about RFID all day and night. So that's uh, you just wouldn't shut up about it. That's why I know so much about RFID, and it's uh, www dot org. Okay, in the old days. This is what people had to do. People had to sit there and wait around for a car to go by and then dial in the IED manually, radio, GSM, etc., etc. But someone had to be there and watch to dial. And it's really hard to hit a moving target like I'm, uh, I'm going to show you in the next slides and such. <laughs> comes down to using two things um, something dumb like an IED uh, what happens most of the time is they find old, old artillery shells landmines etc and they take it apart and put a detonator in it um, luckily for us it's not smart in any ways and it's very hard to hit a moving target to dial in the right number I mean to dial it in properly so it goes off when you want it to so it does the most amount of damage but by adding RFID, you can cut out 95% of like, I don't know, I'm just making up a number now. <laughs> I don't know, but you can make it smart. And this is how you make it smart. First, it starts off with a U, um, all this uh, stuff happens on the, the UHF uh, band. The UHF frequencies of uh, RFID from like 825 to like 926 megahertz uh, or, or something uh, uh, around there from like 850 to 950 uh, megahertz and what I'm proposing is get an RFID tag a paintball gun and epoxy and next slide and um, what you do is you cut the paintball and insert the, the RFID tag um, inside a paintball with the epoxy and you mark the target you do, so you basically put a passive RFID tag UHF tag on the car and this is the actual um, ID part of what's being attached to it an Arduino an, a a common an alien reader UHF reader and antenna the UHF antenna that goes with it it can be separate so you can save so you can save these devices and use them later on but uh, uh, whatever side the ID parts on, it's probably gonna be lost. Yeah, this is how it works. Configure Arduino to interface with the RFID reader, antenna to the reader, and yes, uh, basically it's it's if and thens. It comes down to measuring distance, and um, if X is accomplished, then move to Y. When Y is accomplished, then move to Z. And then finally, like uh, give it the flash. 
uh, give it the charge to the capacitor and then power the flash and then the device will go off. The beauty of this the beauty of this is once you mark the target, you can leave this thing on the side of the road and it'll make, it'll do all the work for you. So when that so when that marked vehicle or marked target or whatever passes the line that you want it to and timed correctly it, and timing, it will go off right on cue. Oh. To make this idea even better, to use it for um, or already in place, um, I guess uh, common operations like this. This is a common four-man army fire team. It, it's a uh, comprised of team leader, rifleman, grenadier, and automatic rifleman. So basically, it's a guy that leads three people. And instead of wasting javelins, those expensive javelins and all these other weapons. Uh, you can set up one of these devices and successfully halt the convoy and create a kill box large enough to uh, eh, large enough to take out at least like four or five vehicles and everyone inside of it. Yep. And there we go with a small four man fire team taking on <laughs> a whole bunch of convoy vehicles because you could because you can count on the first car being stopped. The second car is going to probably stop or ram into it, and then that's when the fire team on the bottom attacks, and the team leader on top hits the car in the middle, separating the convoy. Yeah, basically, a lot of this stuff hasn't been tested um, for countermeasures because, yeah, it just hasn't been done, or the research hasn't been published, so it needs to be redone. This is. Uh, my hypo my hypothesis for uh, jamming uh, UHF frequency RFID since it operates on the 865 to 928 megahertz bands um, you won't be able to use any of the same frequencies uh, that are commonly uh, you can't use any devices that are commonly used on those frequencies like on like GSM cell phones and uh, a whole bunch of other electronics uh, wireless uh, telephones uh, you won't use that in cars but yeah uh, rate common radios things like that all that will be jammed and interfered with so that's a big uh, uh, big problem with uh, jamming RFID while you're running uh, while you're trying to run operations and talk to everyone the countermeasures the other idea I have is the last is the reverse of the other ones is to actually broadcast it transmit on a uh, very powerful 865 to 928 megahertz in front of in front of the lead car to set off the IEDs running on those UHF frequencies. So it should set off all all the devices uh, such as like the GSM IEDs, uh, RFID <laughs> RFID triggered IEDs. Um, well, any, anything within those radio bands, it should set off. Uh, the problem with that is you have bombs going off in front of your car. Well, there's more. Basically, we make this idea of I take this idea of the RFID uh, in making an IED smart using uh, using RFID and doing the reverse of it using an active RFID card already being sold on the market and reverse engineering it so it becomes a triggering device for an IED itself. Um, basically. Uh, I'm gonna use Sun Pass as an example because we're here in Florida. We're based out here in Florida right now, and this is what you mainly see. What happens in the Sun Pass system is when the car goes by, uh, the RFID gets triggered. Um, the, there's RFID antennas on on the top roof that point down to these active tags. So vector of uh, what's that? By taking over the LEDs and uh, or the sound. The beeper on this, it can be used to uh, trigger a IED explosive uh, when it passes underneath any toll system and it and the lights go off or if it beeps. Like the transistor, the battery, the capacitor to charge the flash up, and then finally the flash is a triggering device itself. 
And the best part of this is the device can be slapped underneath the vehicle or anywhere inside the vehicle that can be picked up by um, the RFID uh, sensors on top of the toll pass systems. So when it gets when the car goes underneath the the already in place infrastructure, when it gets the power to the RFID tag, when it triggers the beep or the LED, it will detonate. Yes. Um, also, again, for the countermeasures of this, I, I, I don't know how, how Jammy works with RFID, if it's going to set the devices off or if nothing's going to happen or what. I mean, it, more testing needs to be done. But yeah, um, the, only, the only thing that I could find out for a countermeasure for this is to keep the car in a secure place because you're going to find these systems everywhere. They're everywhere in Florida, California, the UAE, uh, Qatar, Korea, Japan. Uh, they, they use these RFID toll systems and they can be used right now as a triggering device anytime anyone goes through as a detonator. And basically all this is for <laughs> is, to get a, is to get funding for a research lab of my own. <laughs> Um, I hit the I hit the limit of what I could do with uh, RFID research right now because these readers are very expensive. That alien reader that I, that I showed that's commercially available is like over two thousand dollars, and the read writer I need, the Proxmark read writer, is about three hundred and forty-five. Yeah.